Hey folks, Joseph A. Sabora here. After being so busy doing a lot of stuff, I decided to finally do my reaction and review of Nickelodeon's new TV series, Game Shakers, which just came out since September 12, 2015. The series was created by Dan Schneider and stars Kel Mitchell, along with the other cast, Chris Cicino, Madison Shipman, Benjamin Flores Jr. and Thomas Kuhl. Now, my reaction to the series is this. It's not a bad show. It is pretty decent. But it's not nearly as good as all the previous shows that Kale Mitchell has ever done on All That and Keen and Kale. Yeah, both of which uh, Dan Schneider was involved in. Because it had better writing and better jokes and all that. I mean, back in the 90s, of course. But this is pretty much like any other show that Schneider's been doing since the 2000s. Yep. It's just like the TV show iCarly, as well as Victorious, and all the other ones, where, once again, we get random jokes, lousy cliches, you know, strange plots, and... And once again, the characters always do exactly the same way like they did in those previous shows. They go around yelling, screaming. You know, they always come up with their own plans. And, and you even have a kid that goes around not being that smart. He's always acting like a complete dummy. And, and then something bad happens most of the time. That's pretty much what it was. I mean, other than the fact that we got to see Kill Mitchell back on TV again. I just kind of wish the series had done a little better than that. I mean, I know it's a kid's show, you know, and I'm already 30 years old as it is, but I only watched it just for Kill Mitchell, that's all. But other than that, though, I, I'll probably get used to it with the young cast. Yeah. But they definitely need some work. Yeah. Well, anyway, that's why I'm going to start my reviews on four episodes that I just saw recently, starting with the pilot episode, Sky Whale. It's the episode where two partners, Babe and Kenzie, had created a video game that's on the app for the science project called Sky Whale, which that alone became very popular that it actually winds up making millions. And it became a huge success that suddenly both of them decided to start their own game company called Game Shakers with their not so intelligent friend Hudson in Brooklyn, New York. But that's when they actually use uh, the rapper Double G's new song in the game and once he found out Double G decided to sue them for stealing his song because he's also losing money at this point. So in order to make things white, Babe and Kenzie decide to take Double G as their partner and hires their son Triple G as a game consultant. Yeah, that's pretty much what they do. Yeah, because that's when they started to perform the song Drop That What, which would later become the theme song. Yep. It even has guest stars um, Shale Bailey as Ruthless, Reggie Davis. Ray Ford and Bubba Gunter as Bunny. Um, and that was the very first episode too. That's um, that's only an hour long, and they basically just do exactly what they do. But <laughs> what can you do? So that's just what they were trying to do. Yeah, this was where they have a scene when they went inside a restaurant that's right near the subway train. Yeah, they were already trying to come up with their own plan on finding their headquarters. So it becomes their company, Game Shakers. Yeah, they were just coming up with their name. You know, they went to go to a local restaurant. Suddenly, the whole building shakes. Yeah, Kenzie, of course, presuming that it was an earthquake. Yeah, so he wants up hiding underneath the tables. Yeah, a lot of, a lot of those jokes. And then you have a girl... Um, who's along with her family just goes around screaming and yelling Skywell! 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 And she takes her phone and, 
and takes a selfie. Oh god, I hate that name. I would just say picture instead. <laughs> so it takes a picture on their phone so they can send it to uh, Facebook or Twitter and uh, any other kind. That they actually meet those little girls, you know, for creating the game Skywell. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's what they had in that one, and wow, you, you could tell that's what the joke was gonna go for, you know, for more random stuff. They even got a teacher at middle school who acts like you know, you know, he tries to be smart. I'm. Then you got a teacher um, in middle school, you know, who basically just you know teaches them how how to do all all these how to do science and everything, you know, like the photosynthesis. It's kind of interesting because, you know, he actually wrote down photosynthesis on the board and, and it goes straight into the the projector screen. I thought that was really interesting. But, of course, you know, then you have, you know, scenes where where Double G wants up um, at their class, you know, going after Babe and Kinsey. And they just go around having, uh, you know, his crew just, yeah, that that one guy who's... He's tall and big, and he and he basically just yells like he's tough, and and he says, "Sit down," and then the teacher he just sits down anyway. Cause he told him to sit down. That's another joke that you often see in so many shows. I mean, is that supposed to be funny when you had to have a tough guy yelling at an adult like like he's a two-year-old or or a kid or whatever, and he does it anyway? I mean, come on, you, you could do better than that. Double G's crew goes around, you know, in a plane, you know, because they're trying to go to their next tour. They were actually going to Hawaii, but they, after finding out what's going on, and, yeah, you have uh, some of his crew, you know, going around yelling and screaming up on top of their lungs, and you got the fat guy going around, you know, eating some food and all that. <laughs> bananas yeah, that's pretty much what they have here the next episode was called lost jacket falling pigeons which this is where you know once they finally got their success double G actually gives the girls bonuses babe wants to buying a new jacket which was um, pink you know Kenzie wants to buying a square watermelon yeah but all of a sudden, Babe actually lost her jacket on the subway. And she wants up looking for it through the subway station's lost and found room. Where then, all of a sudden, a flock of pigeons uh, started to take over the entire Game Shaker's headquarters. Mostly because, you know, Hudson actually let them out by giving them some food and all that throughout the window. Yeah, because, like I said, Hudson's a dummy. Well, it did have some moments right there because uh, when they went to the Lost and Found, they actually had some stuff that's coming from um, all the previous um, Schneider shows, such as Henry Danger and um, iCarly. Yeah, there was a Henry Danger comic book and all that. I don't really watch those shows, but you get the idea. Anyway, um, another episode I watched was Dirty Blob which they actually created another game after their success with Skywell so all of a sudden the game tricks Trip's teacher so he can test out the dirty blob which then Double G tells Trip that if he does any more of his tricks he'll be kicked out of Game Shakers and be sent to boarding school but when Hudson and Trip decide to play a game and accidentally breaks Kenzie's desktop yeah, an Apple desktop that includes the copy of Dirty Blob. This is where they started yelling and screaming at the top of their lungs throughout the entire New York City. So they wound up going into Dub's office to get the last copy of Dirty Blob before Dub captures them and sends Trip to boarding school, as we know it. But they got um, Dub's pair pad and, and retrieves the copy of Dirty Blob so then everything would be safe. Yeah, that's pretty much what happened in the episode. You had Hudson and Tripp doing some stupid stunts, which all of a sudden they knocked over their Apple desktop, as well as their uh, drive, where they had the video game that they were creating called Dirty Blob. And 
and they feel like they lost everything until they find a better way to fix it so now they can finally um, resolve it all over again and that's pretty much what happened but now we get to the next episode where they have a robot named Migo so it's actually called Migo the Freakish Robot that's the name of the episode where a tall white robot named Migo who's not gender specific yes he's not a male and female he's supposed to be a male actually where the two people Miles and Sharon who owns a company in London called Robotimus Technologies they created a robot named Migo who wants up um, coming into uh, Game Shakers and they're actually supposed to give the kids uh, an inspiration of from their next game which I know that's what they were coming up with but all of a sudden Migo wants up being too attached to Hudson and becomes completely jealous of Trip that wants up having Hudson uh, leaving for a trip with him and Double G and even worse uh, he wants up taking the uh, Triple G up on top of the roof locking the door and was threatened to throw Triple G off of the roof outside which then they had uh, Double G along with Kenzie and Bay as well as his uh, crew to go after um, Migo the robot and yes this was the scene at the end where considering uh, how Double G is, is so freaked out by the robot because he actually saw a horror movie about that that uh, he actually throw Migo out of the roof and it was broken into millions of pieces yeah which uh, <laughs> Kenzie actually took a, uh, a shopping cart and took all the pieces of Amigo <laughs> and and I know even Migo had to saying let me explain what really happened and then <laughs> and then uh, Double G actually took the head of Migo and threw it out and it was broken <laughs> oh the man I have to admit that was pretty funny too but yet at the same time this is not something that even for a kid show to actually see a robot this evil to actually throw a kid like Triple G out of the roof because that's really messed up you know you would imagine what's gonna happen to him next after the first four episodes um, I gave it some thought I mean it did need some work with the writing and all that and I hope that it does and hopefully we'll keep up with it with the next episodes I'm already the next episode is going to be Tiny Pickles, and then after that will be Scared Triplets. So these are the only four episodes um, I just reviewed just now. Um, I'm not going to review all of them, but I'm just going to keep it exactly how exactly what's wrong with the series itself. But like I said, it's it's a decent series, but it's just not as good as as any of the shows that came out before it. I'm not a big fan of his work that came out in in the 2000s and 2010s and because I never watched these shows anyway but I always enjoy watching shows from the 90s like All That, Keen and Kill, Cousin Skeeter and and all the other ones that had before you know, the 2000s but either way I did enjoy the series hopefully it's gonna get better as it turned out I mean, already we had the first season, so we're going to get to that. It was just nice to see Kill Mitchell again, and hopefully he'll do better as far as the series goes. Because he's doing great with stand-up and his music, movies, and all of that. So yeah, it, it's just fun to see him. So anyway, I'm Joseph A. Sabora, and I'll see you later. Bye.